Welcome to another edition of Better Ales and Lagers. I've got a special treat for you today. I'm at the Petticolas Brewery in Dallas, Texas with the founder, Michael Petticolas. And I'm just going to talk about how he got into brewing and certain things that are going on right now in locally here in Texas, but also across the nation. So Mike, thank you very much for taking the time. Absolutely. Especially Happy with, to do this. Especially with how jamming it is out in the brewery right now. It's The tap room is slammed. People came for a tour. It's been a great day. It is a great day. That's that's only going to make this better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, anytime you have good beer, you know, yeah, it's hey, a good day. Good so, beer and good atmosphere. I'm, absolutely. I'm in. I'm in. I'm ready. So tell us a little bit about what, what was your first brewing experience? Like, what, you, what got you even into getting the, the homebrew bug? Uh, really, there's... I'll give you the back back history. Um, really, my first exposure to homebrewing um, was I came home from college one year, and my mom who is kind of a chef, right? Not a, not a professional chef, but I mean, she she cooked, can cook, has always cooked all her life. And I came home uh, one summer into El Paso and we go into the kitchen and she pulls out this big old brown bomber and it's got a cap on it and she gets two glasses and, you know, opens it up and pours two glasses of beer on my own. What's this? She goes, oh, I made some beer. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've really heard of someone brewing beer. And so oh, I, 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 I brewed this beer, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well, cool. And so we poured it and we went in her backyard in El Paso, which overlooks like Mexico and New Mexico. And um, we're sitting on the back porch and I'm drinking her beer and it's good, right? It's not like, oh God, this is really, I'm having it's a great, stomach. Awesome. It was really, it was really good. It was really refreshing. And I mean, that's kind of when it initially hit. I'm like, this is cool that yeah. I'm drinking a beer that, my mom made this is this is awesome which and is, i'm enjoying it it tastes better than you know the stuff i'm buying at the store which is kind of awesome because my mom's a great cook too but she never made me beer yeah, uh, yeah I, I, so. came out of the blue it, ultimately i wasn't surprised just because it is an extension of sure. cooking and i thought oh, all right but so that was my first exposure but you know it was years and years later um i kind of laugh about this now some friends of mine two friends in particular were trying to get me into home brewing. They were home brewing. Oh, you need to get into this. I bought this. Or I was talking about all the stuff they bought. I'm like, dude, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to invest all the money um, sure. in all this brew equipment. And I fast forward now. I'm laughing about how much we've invested in the brewing equipment that we've got now. But that was my initial hesitation. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to. And then one day, my friend Michael Melder, um, who I went to law school with, both these guys, both of these guys were law school buddies. He literally shows up at my house with his arms just full of all sorts of brewing equipment. Said, dude, you don't have an excuse anymore. This is all excess stuff for me now. This is enough to brew beer. We're gonna brew beer. I'm like, let's brew beer. And so we went up to homebrew headquarters. Sure. Uh, we met there Kelly. Often. Right, right. Um, bought ingredients and brewed my first beer, a Belgian quad, which turned out just atrocious and never <laughs> fermented all the way down with secondhand equipment. The capper was breaking every single bottle. It was just, but that's where it started. I'm like, huh, well, that was fun. All right, so I just need a capper, right? And then you know how it is. All right, sure. well, I need this and I need a new mash done upgrade. So that's kind of how it happened for me. Okay. Now, at what point, now, like you said, you were a lawyer, or still are a lawyer, actually, but right. um, wh at what point did you decide, okay, this is something I want to do professionally, this is something I really want to you know, pour my passion into? So I was brewing at home over the years, and I always enjoyed it, mm -hmm. always enjoyed it, and every time I brewed that Imperial Red Ale, people are like, dude, this beer, this is awesome, this is like, this is better than anything out there, and this is still crap beer at this point is out there, right? Sure. Um, people liked the beers I brewed, but they always responded to that one. Always thought it was kind of cool, um, but didn't think about it commercially at all until really 2010. Um, I started reflecting on everything I ever wanted to do in the legal industry and started, you know, literally I had a list of things I wanted to accomplish and I, I accomplished it all. It was 2010. I realized, man, I did all that. I did this. I did that. I wanted to do it. I've, I've done it. And I'm like, well, what else really is there? So what's the next challenge? What else? And yeah, that's just it. What is the next challenge? I'm, I'm not someone who can kind of go through the motions. I need another challenge. And so I started thinking about what else can I do? You know, but I had operated my own law firm at that time. And, you know, I like not having a boss, I guess. Right. You know, I show up at work at 7 a.m. And I feared someone I was looking at a federal job and I just thought about me leaving at four o'clock and hearing some guy say, hey, Pedicles, where are you going? It's like, dude, well, I'm leaving. I got here at 7. You got here at 9.30. That's why you're here till 6.30, you know? Right. And I didn't want to go through that. And then, uh, you know, my wife really is the brainchild. She was the one we were talking about 
a brewery and she's like you know how come we don't just open up a brewery ourselves and Dallas at the time was the largest city in the United States that didn't have a brewery and I'm like well either no one's capitalized on the opportunity or there's no market and so 2010 is the year I really drilled down wrote a business plan and figured out yeah I think this can be viable and you guys really were on that kind of vanguard because in Texas at the end of 2011 in Texas, we had 33 independent breweries, and by the end of last year, we were over 200. Right. So, you know, I mean, the, the, you were really at the beginning of that explosion. So you For guys, sure. I know you guys really inspired a bunch of other people to kind of take up the reins. Yeah, so. I, I, there are a lot of guys that are operating breweries now that came in here and helped me yeah. on day one. You know, I've got a lot of personal friends in the industry, and yeah, I definitely take pride in that, too, for sure. So. Now, in Texas a couple of years ago, there was a law passed which um, you actually fought in the courts uh, successfully. And so maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about what the legislature passed and why it wasn't good for the craft beer industry and how you were able to defeat it. Okay. Um, gosh, I really, I don't want to, I am an attorney, so I don't want to bore you. I don't want to yeah. bore people who are watching or listening this. Um, so I'll try to give, you know, the, uh, the short version of this. But uh, so in 2013, they passed a law, the Texas legislature, that made it illegal for a brewery such as myself to sell the right to distribute my beer to a distributor. So before 2013, if a distributor wanted to get a brewery's beer, they could go to them and say, hey, we will pay you X number of dollars to distribute your beer. And the reason they have value is because once you sign that distributor, you have them for life. It's mm -hmm. very, very hard to get out of it. Um, but in 2013, they made it illegal for a brewer to sell those rights. You literally had to give them away. So in 2012, I could have sold them. 2013, I have to give them. I don't so even have the, a choice. So they can want to pay me, but it's illegal for them to pay me. So the legislature is essentially forcing you to give up the rights to your physical and intellectual property. Right. And I, yes, I mean, I took personal offense to it because of my legal background. Um, I mean, I built a career protecting people's rights, so it was... I took personal offense to it, and I'm a 100%, I mean, I own 100% of my brewery, there's no investors, there's not a bank, you know, it's me, my wife, and my three kids, right? Sure. So I looked at it as, man, they're taking away not my rights, but and my wife's rights, but our, my family's rights, sure. and they're valuable, they have value, and so um, I sued the state of Texas because I did not think that law was constitutional. Um, so we sued in 2014, and then in October of last year, 2016, uh, the trial court ruled in our favor and now the state is enjoined from enforcing that law so again now i can go back and sell those rights but th the thing that really made it so uh offensive was that when the law was uh in effect i had to give away those rights but then a distributor could sell those rights to another distributor sure. so in other words i had to give them to distributor a on Thursday, on Friday, distributor A could sell them to distributor B for, I don't know, however much they want, a million? And you get who knows? Nothing. I get nothing. I and get you have no choice in who you get to work with now. <laughs> that, that as well. Um, and that's what I thought, man, that's just not that, how, that. What kind of equal protection is that? Why right. am I getting the short end of the stick? So the trial court um, agreed with us. We won that. The state has since appealed it. Um, it's on appeal right now. But while it's on appeal, that law is history. Yeah. Well, hopefully the appellate court will see the same wisdom that the trial court did. And we'll... Oh, God, I hope so. I, I have more confidence in the appellate court than I even did uh, the trial court. I, I thought we would win all along. I never would have filed the lawsuit if I didn't think we would win. But, you know, a lot of times you lose when you think you're going to win. Sure. Sometimes you win when you think you're going to lose. So um, I was very happy to win. And there's really, I haven't been blown away by anything I've seen from the state and their appeal. So I do have confidence that we'll win, but you know, won't, wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong if we don't. Well, here's hoping you're not. God, uh, all right, thank you for that. So now another law got passed just recently where I believe it's if you go over 175,000 barrels per year in production, is that right? That um, it triggers, uh, I'm sorry, I forget that. A tap room exclusion? Yeah, yeah. Right, where you can't operate a tap room right um or you have like to sell the brewer, the beer to the distributor and they had to sell it back to yeah, you yeah so or? once you reach a certain so what we do right now we brew our beer we put it in kegs and put it in a glass you know into our stomachs you know you know how that all works uh yes we're very adept at that <laughs> right right 
uh, we just basically put our beer into kegs and either sell them to a retailer or just literally hook them up and sell them in our tap room. Mm -hmm. What they are going to force us to do once you reach a certain size, right. I'm not affected right now, um, is they're gonna make you sign a distributor. So for me, if we reach that size, we would be forced to take on a distributor to continue to operate a tap room. So we would, the thing that makes it so ridiculous is, all right, so I have to sell it to a distributor and then the distributor sells it back to me. So I sell it to the distributor at wholesale, then I have to buy it back my own beer at retail and it never leaves the brewery. They don't even touch it's the beer. They don't even deliver it. You know, they are distributors. Usually they pick up your beer and then they Take distribute it, it. Yeah. right? It, this is just a complete- It's a paper uh, transaction. It's a money grab. It, there's no better way to put it, really. There's not. So we have to pay for someone to absolutely nothing if we reach that size and nothing changes between now and then. So, well, hopefully a lot of things change. Oh God, we're, we're trying, we try. Yeah. So now getting to your beer, um, I know you guys uh, now didn't, when you first came out with Velvet Hammer, didn't you guys win your very first year up at GVF or was it? We, we did win our very first year at the Great American Beer Festival, but it was not for Velvet Hammer. Oh, it was not. Which one? We won our first GABF gold for Royal Scandal. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, our English, English Pale. Pale. Right. Which had only been in the market 40 days when it won. That's awesome. That, that was awesome. I mean, what a day. That's been one. And one, that's still one, one of my favorite days. English Pales uh, that well, I've ever had. So I just did a tour. I don't know if you saw the tour, but I got that question. That's still, it's still my favorite beer of everything we produce. And just because I think it's... It's uh, so accessible at so many different times. It, it's 100 degrees out there today. It tastes great on a 100 degree day. When it's 30, it tastes great. With a burger, it's awesome. With tacos, it's great. Um, so I, it's very I versatile. That, I like it with everything. I drink that beer. Uh, to me, that just screams a fall day and a nice hearty sandwich. <clears throat> you know, I, watching football. There are four taps at my house. Three of them rotate, and one is always Royal Scandal. Always. Nice. So now, recently, uh, the independent, uh, their craft, or I guess the Brewers Association, excuse me, came out with the independent craft beer label, and I thought it was a good thing. I think I think the idea still needs some refinement, but I think it's a good start. But did you happen to see AB InBev's high end response to that? The high end line response. I did. To that? I think I've even forgotten it. It was so inconsequential to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I applaud the Brewers Association for putting something together. You're not going to be able to satisfy every person sure. every brewer every single time um but i applaud them for doing something regardless they're providing brewers you know something that they can use and stand behind um i i somewhat remember a response maybe the next one or two days from one of the publications i follow i can't remember the context or the it content was, of it to me it was just so over the top um especially i think it was the gentleman from uh four peaks out in arizona and they he said, you know, I don't need the Brewers Association to tell me what good beer is. I was like, well, I hope not. You run a brewery. Right. Um, but not only that, that's not what the Brewers Association is doing. They're allowing people to make an informed decision of where they're placing their money. It's got nothing to do with what's inside the bottle. It's everything to do with where I'm spending my money. Is my, going, is my money staying in my community and going to my neighbors like you guys? Or is my money going to Belgium? Precisely. You know, and so and my real question to them is, why are you so afraid of that? So, you know, and... It, 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 to me, I you know you were offended by the law. As a consumer, I was offended by their response. Right. Well, I mean, I can tell you why. <laughs> um, they continue to lose market share. Yeah. Right. Craft beer continues to take market share from them. So that's why, and they have the resources. And there's all whenever we're not at odds with big beer on every issue. No. But on the lion's share of them, a lot of them we are, and there's they're always going to have a response. And guess sure. what? Crap brewers are always going to have a response to big beer, right? It's just, it's how it happens. And so for me, um, it's nothing new. Right? Sure. I got to tell you, my favorite two beers from you guys, first of all, as much as I love the Velvet Hammer, I came in one day and had something called Sledgehammer. <laughs> and I wish it was more readily available, but I love that beer for two reasons. One, first of all, it, it tastes amazing. But second of all, I get this wonderful little soundtrack in my head because every time I drink it, I hear Peter Gabriel. Yes, thank God. That's the proper Sledgehammer song to hear. That's what I hear. <laughs> yes. And then right when we released it, there was some 
girl group that had a sledgehammer song. And all so I'm like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. That's, so that's what I hear as yeah, well. I see yeah, the wonderful not, video with the claymation. Yes, and, for yeah, sure. It, it, takes me, it takes me right back to the 80s and when MTV actually played music. Yep. Um, Darn so, right. But yeah, we don't sell that. It's only available here and yeah. we take it to festivals. It's, it was an anniversary beer. We did it for our third anniversary and None of our anniversary beers have we ever sold outside the brewery. I know, but it's fantastic. I have to. I get it almost every time. I come well, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. And, and then the other one, of course, is Royal Scandal because it's just like you, like you said, it's so exciting. You can drink it all the time. Although a, a very close third would be Golden Op because so up at the uh, up at Thirsty Growler where I work, they they'll let us drink. You know, but you know, got to be careful. Obviously, you don't sure. want to break TABC. I don't want to get. it. And so I, I always think to myself, all right, I, I can't get over 0.08. I got to make sure I'm being careful. I look up on the board, and I can't find a better beer under five percent than yeah. Golden Opportunity. Yeah. So you know, I drink it religiously almost. Um, well, thank you for that. Is, I appreciate that. It is my go-to. Um, so, what are your two favorites, real quick? Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Golden Opportunity because Golden Opportunity is a beer that I've come to appreciate more the past maybe 18 months. I didn't used to drink that much Golden Opportunity, and I probably pour myself more Golden Opportunity here at the brewery than anything else for similar reasons. Like, now I need something that's a little lighter, or right. if I'm at a lunch at one of my accounts, and I want Golden Opportunity because Hammer's a little bit big, and two Hammers is like, gosh, I still have to work. I um, forget about sit down. Yeah, so... <laughs> uh, Sit down is probably it's always been Royal Scandal and Sit Down, kind of Royal Scandal and Sit Down, always right there, uh, one and two. But you know, I love Thrilla in Brazil. Yeah. Every time we bring it back, I'm like, man, this. Well, year, you have a huge passion for soccer. Too, I do, so. I do, and, and maybe part of it is I do think about oh, when we released it and that tournament was going on, it was so massive, it was so cool, such a celebration. But that's part of beer, right? It's the Absolutely. experience. It's like. What, it's not just the beer, but who you were with and how you experienced that beer. So Certainly. maybe that's part of it, but that Amarillo hop and that beer just shines. And I love that beer. I love that beer. Every time it's gone out of the brewery, I'm sad. Real quick before we get to our last question. Um, and then my, my, brain, my brain just went blank because I was listening to you geek out over to <laughs> um, That so, reminds me of the time I was doing a mock trial with a guy and he said, Your Honor, I have just one more question. I have no further questions. <laughs> so, yes, All right, just, fair enough. I well, thought we that got was that. great. I, I was like, oh, I have no questions. That was great. That was great. We got that. We, well, we got that story out of you, so that worked. Um, so, one thing we always ask uh, every person we interview with that nerd show and Better Ales and Loggers is: so, with Star Wars Episode Eight coming up, and we're obviously nerds. We beer nerds. We're nerds about everything. We just. As Simon Pegg once said, being a nerd just means not having to explain your love for something. <laughs> um, so, uh, or being ashamed of it. Um, with Luke Skywalker been in exile for 20 years or 15 years or however long they're going to say he's in, been in exile and he's been in that monastery. If he had to drink one of your beers for the, that exile, which beer would it be? Pretty simple answer, right? I mean, he's pulled the ultimate Irish goodbye. <laughs> I don't think. All right, for those of you who don't know or haven't got it, Mike brews a Irish red ale every February comes out, and it's honestly the best Irish red ale I've ever had outside of Ireland. It's fantastic, um, and it's called the Irish Goodbye. So uh, if you're in Dallas in February or March, do yourself a favor, get to a tap room, find it, because it's really that good. And if you don't know, Irish Goodbye is like ghosting. It's the yeah. guy who you go to a bar with, and all of a sudden everyone's like, hey, where, where's Bill? And Bill's gone because he's Irish goodbye. He didn't yeah. say anything to anybody. He's just no longer there. I Very much like Luke, personally right? since Yes. Personally, since he's been in an abbey these whole time, I would go with a lost epic. Ah, uh, all right. Alden triple. Okay, and he on. is a lost epic. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. I should have been quicker. That's all right. That's all right. We appreciate I'm your sticking time. with my answer. I'll, I'll stick with I, that. I love that, the answer. That, I will also accept a lost epic. That would have been good. Fantastic. Mike, thank you so much for the time. I know you're a busy man. We yeah. really appreciate it. Happy to do it. Really nice to meet you. Enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. You as well.